This video is brought to you by Aura. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. In 1770, Hungarian author and inventor Wolfgang von Kemplen built and unveiled a self-operating chess-playing machine called the Mechanical Turk. In demonstrations around Europe, his chess-playing invention won most of its games against actual human chess players, and it's even said that it went on to beat players like Napoleon and Benjamin Franklin. Naturally, the invention was extremely popular, a marvel of its day. However, it was actually just some guy under the table secretly operating the machine. In other words, it was a hoax. Some 250 years later, in 2016, Amazon pulled a similar stunt. Their checkout system, called Just Walk Out, allowed customers to simply grab items from the store and leave. Under this system, customers didn't have to manually scan their items at the checkout. The transactions and logistics were automatically taken care of behind the scenes by AI. An elegant combination of computer vision, sensor fusion, and deep learning. Or was it? Just like the Mechanical Turk, all was not as it seemed. Amazon's so-called AI technology was actually powered by a thousand people in India watching and labelling videos to ensure accurate checkouts. Now, humans labelling data is often how AI models are first trained, and that's fine, but the point is, the advertising was misleading. Even by 2022, these 1,000 people were still manually reviewing 70% of transactions in 20 Amazon Go stores, 40 Amazon Fresh grocery stores, and two Whole Foods stores. Although some saw it as dystopian, Amazon promoted their Just Walk Out technology as a utopian magical solution powered by AI. And herein lies the problem. Companies often leave out critical information in the fine print, it wasn't until 2023 that Amazon mentioned the use of the 1,000 people in India. And it gets worse. According to a report by The Information, other companies were swindled too. Quote, 30 stores operated by other companies in the US, sports stadiums, 12 airports, and one university all used Amazon's walkout technology. And this is where things become murky. When companies promise revolutionary technology, but don't follow up on them, it creates distrust, but it can even spoil it for those who are doing legitimate work in the field. With the AI revolution that we've seen over the past couple of years, there needs to be a more critical look at what's happening with AI. In this episode, we'll see the reasons for the AI hype and its consequences. We'll look at if there is indeed an AI bubble and what real world impact that might be having. This includes companies releasing half-baked AI products, but also simultaneously replacing actual humans with AI. It's a dichotomy of an industry, so sit back and relax as we make sense of it all. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. One use of AI technology that absolutely nobody is thrilled about is the fact that it can make scammers' lives easier. AI can help generate convincing texts that try to trick you into clicking a phishing link. And then there's the spam emails and robocalls. You've all experienced it, but why does it happen? It's because your information has been sold to data brokers. They're making a fortune from selling your information to robocallers and scammers. They can know a lot about you, including your name, phone number, and address. But there's a simple way to stop this. That's where today's sponsor, Aura, comes in. They can identify data brokers and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do. Let Aura handle that for you. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats that you can't see. It's really easy to set up, so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, a VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. And you get everything at one affordable price. Visit aura.com slash coldfusion to get started on a two-week free trial. Offer only available in the United States. Okay, so let's continue. No, it's not just you. The term AI is really being thrown around everywhere. For older Cold Fusion viewers, you'd know that I've been covering AI for the good part of a decade now. Before 2022, the word artificial intelligence was limited to industry verbiage and obscure research papers. The general public didn't know or care. And even as late as 2021, when I covered GPT-3, there was a lot of people that thought I was just making it up. How could a computer possibly talk like that? Well, as you all know, after 2022, especially following the launch of ChatGPT, it was a different story. From your smartphone, to LinkedIn, to your local government site, a lot of organizations today will boast the term powered by AI. 
While in a lot of cases it makes sense, the overuse of the term and it being thrown around so casually is a symptom of something called AI washing. AI washing, simply put, is when companies create a fake buzz and mislead investors by providing manipulative information about the capabilities, limitations, or risks of their AI products, or simply wholesale lie about how and when they're using AI. According to Goldman Sachs, a record 36% of S&P 500 companies mentioned AI in their Q4 earnings reports. If the biggest companies in the world are hyping it up, there's no doubt that smaller companies are following suit, and some without tangible results backing up their claims. And the investments are there to match too. From 2015 to 2022, global corporate AI investments have increased seven times. A lot of companies have seen tremendous growth in the recent AI hype. And this puts pressure on other companies to integrate AI into their business model or their products in order to compete. And that's even if it's not really AI. Monkey see, monkey do. For example, the Canadian investment firm Delphia claimed that it had built an AI to predict upcoming companies and industry trends, despite not having any such capabilities. The SEC caught wind of the scam and has since ordered them to pay $225,000, and this was for false advertising and misleading statements about the use of AI, and I have a feeling that this is just the start. I previously talked about the Wirecard fraud, where CEO Marcus Braun boasted about having advanced proprietary AI throughout their fintech products and services. In reality, it was just spreadsheets. In the end, there was $2 billion missing from the books, but that was a story for a different day. You might have also heard about the NPU, or Neural Processing Unit. It's a dedicated processor specifically designed for AI tasks, among other things. They're becoming increasingly common in the world of PCs and laptops, and Microsoft has even claimed that we're now in the age of the AI PC. But recent reviews of the current crop of these products have left consumers with a bad taste in their mouth. Let's talk a bit more about AI. Yes, the Snapdragon processors dominate here, but AI is still very nascent. Many people either won't use these tasks all that much, or these tasks themselves just don't work that well yet. For example, they demo generating images of animals, and they highlighted how fast their processors were versus Intel. But when I looked closely at the images generated, they were all garbage. The AI dogs all had very lopsided eyes. So who cares if one of these processors is faster than the other if they are both generating garbage? Right now, I just wouldn't advise anyone buy a laptop based on its AI capability. A news analyst from Computer World has mentioned that these AI PCs aren't, quote, all they're cracked up to be. And if you're expecting something transformative when you buy one from the start of 2024, you're going to be disappointed. They might one day deliver a lot of cool features, just not yet, end quote. But are there consequences of such misplaced promises? Other than distrust from customers, companies that miss the mark with AI product launches are constantly trying to save face. Even the most popular companies in the world are not immune to mistakes. Perhaps the biggest consequence of AI washing is a certain B word that might be lurking around the corner. Almost as soon as AI started going uber mainstream from late 2022, a lot of people immediately likened the phenomenon to the dot-com bubble or even the crypto fiasco. In fact, some people still do today. Even when we talk about the dot-com bubble, it's not the World Wide Web that was the problem, because of course, you're using it right now. Instead, it was mostly the e-commerce side of things which overpromised, reeling in investors, but under-delivered, leading to a crash when everyone realized that the companies that they invested in weren't making any money. With AI, there's no doubt that we'll see some more investment in the space and monumental growth too. According to Oppenheimer, no, not the one you're thinking of, who's a chief global equity strategist at Goldman Sachs Research, quote, we believe we are in the relatively early stages of a new technology cycle that is likely to lead to further outperformance, end quote. NVIDIA, who designs the chips that are powering big tech's AI revolution, is tentative proof of this. Their stock is up 80% this year alone. Perhaps excessive, but it's indicative of what the market thinks of AI. Mark Cuban, who made his fortune during the dot-com era, also doesn't see AI as a bubble. In a recent interview with Lex Friedman, he expressed that the biggest sign that we're not in a bubble is the lack of IPOs in the AI sector. Also, the absence of companies with no intrinsic value going public and the lack of, quote, funky AI companies is a key indicator. He noted that the current market doesn't exhibit such characteristics. And I think that I largely agree with that. There's obviously some bad players in the industry who are just trying to make a quick buck. But there might be more to it, and here's what I mean. There's a known pattern for emerging technologies called the Gartner hype cycle. 
It describes how humans tend to be overzealous about a new revolutionary technology. We overestimate and overshoot its impact, hype it up until the market crashes. And after the crash, the real companies with the real value come through and spearhead the development of the new technology until it's mature. If we look at the Gartner hype cycle for AI, it seems like we're at the closing stages of the peak of inflated expectations and are slowly entering the trough of disillusionment. This interpretation of the current market means that there's going to be a lot of disappointment ahead. The real applications of AI will come after the hype and fatigue fades. But this time could be a little bit different because at its core, AI has the ability to mimic cognitive labor, a change that no previous technology has been able to do without intrinsic human intervention. Whereas, as pointed out in a previous podcast episode, during the dot-com bubble, there were a lot of people simply making a random website and going public, and investors would throw money at anything with a dot-com at the end of its name. There's been a lot of organizations that have been rushing to launch AI products or replace humans with AI altogether. But the ones who are hastily adding the ever popular, quote, powered by AI gimmick are failing badly and there have been some spectacular AI failures. For example, a parcel delivery firm called DPD enabled an AI online chat for answering questions. For one customer, it was not only useless at answering relevant questions regarding his order, but instead, when asked, it provided him with a poem and swore at him. This amazing poem came forth about a DPD chatbot who, who wasn't able to do anything. It was quite amazing. It appeared to even disregard its own rules and started swearing, and even started dissing its own employer, adding, DPD is the worst delivery firm in the world. I would never recommend them to anyone. In Australia, a group of academics used AI-generated material as part of their complaint submission to the Australian Parliament against four of Australia's biggest banks. Of course, the AI made up a whole bunch of information, including scandals that never existed and implicating Deloitte when they had nothing to do with the original complaint. Someone on the team didn't read the entire submission before it went to the Australian government, so it was a huge embarrassment and the academics were forced to apologise. This is just one of many examples, and I'm going to include a website that keeps a running tab of these AI blunders. But on the other hand, there are companies who are integrating AI successfully, and this is where we come to the other kind of broken promise when it comes to AI. It's not CEOs over-promising AI's usefulness, but under-promising instead. In other words, we were told that AI would be our assistants and create new jobs, not replace us. But what if that's just not true? Not about replacing the human in the loop. In fact, it's about empowering the human. Like it's human. an assistant. It's an assistant. This clip from Satya is a bit hard to believe now, even though later he did mention the flip side. Yes. I'm sure a lot of us use ChatGPT to help get work done on personal projects, but AI eventually creating more jobs than it would replace, maybe not so fast. You may have noticed that since 2022, there's been a lot of tech-related layoffs. The narrative is that this is happening due to the overhiring during the pandemic times. And that would make sense for 2022 and even 2023, but in 2024, we're still seeing mass layoffs. Now, if companies were just struggling to make a profit, the explanation would be as simple as the common business cycle. But strangely, some of the biggest companies in the world are seeing record profits. They're almost cyclically shedding workers. According to reports, tech companies fired 165,000 people in 2022, 260,000 in 2023, and so far, the projection is 270,000 in 2024. So if companies are doing fine, why are workers being kicked out the door? Well, marketing professor and author Scott Galloway thinks, quote, there's something else going on, end quote. In his recent blog post, dissecting the impact of AI on corporations, he mentions, quote, AI is playing a larger role in layoffs than CEOs are willing to admit, end quote. The normal way we think about job replacements caused by AI is that Joe Bloggs is working at his computer, analyzing company figures or something like that. And then suddenly, the next day, he's replaced by an AI, but the truth is, it's a bit more nuanced than that. As companies slowly get better at understanding how AI can aid in their operations, they'll create better teams and structure with higher outcomes. Basically, instead of three people doing the work of three, you'll have one person doing the work of five with AI. The problem is that none of these companies are being sincere about it. Because if you're a CEO and you've been hyping up AI as the single greatest thing to happen to the industry, and then you follow it up with a memo that you've laid off 30% of your staff because of AI, the hypocrisy becomes clear. 
But in 2024, it seems like the truth is slowly coming out, and there's hints everywhere. IBM made headlines when CEO Arvind Krishna mentioned that they're planning to pause hiring roles that could be replaced with AI. Same with UPS, where recently their CEO, Carol Tom, acknowledged that AI is playing a part in employee layoffs. And this came after UPS had the largest layoff in its 116-year history, 12,000 workers. In both cases, spokespeople later clarified saying, quote, AI is not replacing workers, end quote, which is basically PR talk to save face. In fact, a Shopify employee broke their non-disclosure agreement to expose that the company has been secretly firing employees because of AI. The shift is even having an impact far outside the tech industry. TV and media producer Tyler Perry was building an $800 million studio expansion, but paused its construction after he saw the results of OpenAI Sora, an AI video generator. He made the remark, quote, I am very, very concerned that in the near future, a lot of jobs are going to be lost. End quote. In the last couple of years, you probably would have heard this phrase a bit. AI will not replace humans, but humans who utilize AI will replace humans who don't. There's definitely some truth to it, but some jobs will be at risk regardless. We don't have to imagine this. It is already happening. Mega caps like Meta and Alphabet, they are shrinking their workforces and, and shrinking their hiring. It's this idea that senior AI researchers or data analysts, they can do more with Gen AI than an army of junior engineers who code. A recent report from McKinsey found that around 12 million US workers may need to switch jobs by 2030. Lower wage workers are 14 times more likely to be impacted. STEM, healthcare, builders, and professional fields will continue to add jobs, but generative AI could change work significantly for occupations like customer service and sales and office support. There's been repeated reports of how AI will be adding hundreds of millions of jobs in the next decade and how it's going to positively impact GDP. While by some miracle this could happen, right now, as has been the case in many times in history, the train will leave the station without telling us. Whether we're aware to jump on board or not is the question. So wrapping this all up, I do have to mention that in no way am I saying that all forms of AI and all of these giant corporations are elaborate hoaxes. In fact, on this channel, I've been making videos about AI progress for the better part of a decade now. And I've seen exponential progress right in front of my eyes. And so will many of you. We may have hit a temporary bottleneck when it comes to compute, but all it takes is a breakthrough in model efficiency and the curve continues upwards. But I just think that it's important to still have a cautious approach when it comes to looking at all sides of a story. I'm also working on a video that's all about the positive real-life impacts of AI. So hopefully that's going to balance things out a bit. So far, it seems like the promises of AI are yet to be fully realized. Whether that's creating and not taking jobs, solving global issues, or even providing us with a dependable AI customer service bot that doesn't swear at us. With such big and bold promises from these companies over the years, it's important for all of us to ask ourselves, do we have technological gold, a Trojan horse, or a chess master hiding under a table. Anyways, that's about it from me. My name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion. If you did like that episode, feel free to subscribe. There's plenty of other interesting stuff on the channel. All right, so I'll catch you again soon. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. A better future. Heaven help us make a better future. A better future. Heaven help us make a better future.